really, really lovely, beautifully read, thank you. So you can see where John's wacky influences come from. Now, people, I remember seeing an interview, um, or an American interview, uh, would you ever write your story, your autobiography? And John, scathing, he says, oh, I would never do anything like that. I don't know why anybody does that. <coughs> I, I wouldn't think of doing anything like that. I was sitting watching it, I thought, imagine doing it all the time in your songs. If you look back, even the help that we all know and we all sing along to, what's a crime for help? And I don't think, I didn't realise it. And he was still at home then. He didn't realise that it had come from so deep. So he's written the story of his life, really, and his feelings and what was going on with him in the songs. So what we've done is we've taken a selection of the songs, and I have to say that Nick chose them, and he chose them really well. We went away and made a list each, and they almost coincided completely. And no. I've made a few notes on them, so I need these. Um, we asked the library for a CD player, just to give a little flavour of some of the songs. And you know, you're listening, you hear songs again and again. And I said to Nick, I can't get the name, Roger and I, my partner, we're in the car, and I said, listen to this with me, I can't find a title, I know the song really well. It's called Meat City, and Nick's just given me, because he came off the internet. I didn't even know the title of that song, and yet I could sing the song. It's crazy. Isn't it? So we started off with "In My Life" as an early one. We picked some songs and put them into an album. This is on Rubber Soul, and I think people talk about Sergeant Pepper being. Most people would say Sergeant Pepper is the most uh, the most changing album, the album that really changed them. I think it started before with Revolver, with the White Album. I think this had all started with looking through a glass of gun and stuff like that back in the USSR. And that um, Sergeant Pepper was just a consolidation of what was going on, not the beginning. And that's how I feel about it anyway. But we both chose In My Life and we really, it's a very evocative song. Um, I'm sure it will be known the words, so Nick's going to read them anyway, and then we'll listen to it. In Dunness in Scotland, where we were sent on holiday to my mother's sister, Maria Scott, from Sutherland, right, right, right on the northern coast. And Roger and I went there a few years ago because they did what, what was it, Roger, what celebration was it? It was a, some celebration of John's being there, and they've actually made a little garden and in my life is written out there, or carved out there, which is lovely. So it's sort of there forever. And that's in Dunness in Scotland if you get that far. Um, so this is the song, In My Life, and as I said, it's the story of John Thorpe. There are places I remember. All my life, though some have changed. Some forever, not for better. Some have gone and some remain. All these places have their moments. With lovers and friends, I still can recall. Some are dead and some are living. In my life, I've loved them all. But of all these friends and lovers, there is no one that compares with you. And these memories lose their meaning when I think of them as something new. Though I know I'll never lose affection for people and things that went before, I know I'll often stop and think about. In my life, I love you more. There are places I'll remember all my life, though some have changed. Some forever, not for better. Some have gone and some remain. Though I know I'll never lose affection for people and things that went before, I know I'll often stop and think about it. In my life, I love you more. In my life, I love you more. Or 
to receive Bob Dylan get the Nobel Prize for Literature, um, they just won't even contemplate it. But if you read his words, if you've got the book and you just read them through, they're astounding. It's poetry. Um, <coughs> John was um, in that bracket. Neither of us are competent singers in any way, but of course, we 
we sand them and they thought it was hugely funny. And we sand like a rubber boat ashore. Hokey pokey, yeah. Uh, they loved the hokey pokey. Uh, green sleeves, we were singing anything that we could think of from our own school days that they could sing along. Well, just a really relaxing one evening, all the girls were in their beds and we were sitting just drinking tea. Roger said, we should sing Imagine. Oh, why didn't I think that? Like, yeah, of course we should. Well, we, we couldn't think of the words, could we? <laughs> we sat down with pen and paper and we got Imagine. Imagine. So, next morning, five o'clock, as you start life early in India, we're at the bus stop. And it's an hour and a half, it's a tour, we went to the nearest town, made a phone call that cost us about 50 quid in like a, a proper telegraph place, because this is the early to mid 90s, no, no tapping going on there. Phoned our friend back in Chester, and I said, Margaret, Margaret, this is costing lots of money, just give me the words too much. She said, I don't bloody know that you should. <laughs> so she said, I'll get them for you. So we went and had some coffee, because you couldn't often get coffee in Northern India, so we went to a coffee place, had a coffee, did a bit of shopping, went all the way back to the ashram. How long was it before the words arrived? Yeah, a couple of weeks. <laughs> <coughs> and the words arrived, and so we taught them, imagine, and we're, as we're reading them, we oh, didn't know that one. <laughs> because it's a song you hear, and it becomes almost automatic. It was just disgraceful that we couldn't remember the words. Anyway, after that, we then went down to Central South India to Hyderabad, and we were doing a project for Oxfam and Save the Children in the Mind. And Oxfam wanted to buy, they, they do fabulous things, buy land and sell it back to the women. Notice, the women. You sell it to the men, nothing happens. You sell it to the women, food, food happens. Yeah, it's brilliant. So they sell it back to the women. And the woman in charge there wanted um, everything writing down. It was 100,000 hectares or uh, whatever it was, I can't remember that. But it was a 10,000 word thing. Proposal to Oxfam in Norway. So I finished it all off and we took it into Hyderabad to get tired. And it looked so stark, it was all about acres and, and people and panchayats, councils and everything. It was, it was like, really, give us the money and this is what we're going to do. And to break it up, to soften it, I wrote out, because I knew them then, the words to imagine at the bottom and put. John Lennon on it, but I better, better credit John on this. Now, nobody knew anything about John and India, wherever we were, they didn't know. So we were just there as volunteer workers for saving children. And we did crossover stuff with Oxfam and stuff. And uh, it came back, and they said, Oh, this is very good. Oh, we should probably get the money. They did. They said, Well, what is this? <coughs> what is this again? Who is this? You Lennon. <laughs> Western poet, leave it in. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my little story. 